the number one cause from a running form or mechanical standpoint. There's a method to all the madness. If you look back previously, I created a yellow running analysis. It's a little bit more detailed than the green, the basic four. We're looking at 10 criteria, but there's a reason why. Each criteria is pass-fail. If you fail it, it correlates with certain pathologies or injuries that tend to happen. So it helps you to kind of match up to kind of organize all this in your mind. So with the criteria for number 10, it has to do with this. We want to keep your ankles inside of your knees. And why is that? If you do that, if you keep your ankles inside of your knees, you're staying in the sagittal plane, you're moving forward, we're not having as much of that rotational or the twisting. But what can happen is if you fail this, if your ankles come outside of your knee, we've got this rotation, this torsion. It's like we're, we're weaving. Here's where the aha moment comes in. What muscle, when your knee is bent up this high, what internally rotates? What causes this motion, this weaving, what can get my heel outside of my knee? My TFL muscle, your tensor fascia lata. What is that muscle? That becomes your IT band. So hopefully this is making sense to you. If you're using your TFL to internally rotate and to bring, to swing your leg forward, not only are you gonna have more tightness of your TFL because you're constantly using it, you're not meant to use it for that, it's gonna become tighter, but it's also gonna affect the play and the mobility of your IT band. And this is all friction syndrome. Anything that is tots it down and makes it tighter, we're gonna be in trouble. That 30 degree zone where that flips over that condyle and we get that wearing away, we're adding tautness and tightness to that band and we're adding torsion or twisting. The push with the tush is the first part. This is gonna set us up. When I'm driving forward, I wanna make sure my heel stays down a little bit longer. I wanna make sure that I'm using my glute max to extend my hip to propel me forward because this should be your end of your stride. This is what it should look like. We shouldn't see high amounts of knee flexion of your heel coming up really high. That's gonna cause more bending, more tension, more hamstrings, less power. By having this be more the back of your stride position, when it comes to coming out of this, this position, it's a lot harder to use your TFL to internally rotate. It's really hard from that position. It is not an advantage position for that. Using a step, they've done a study where they show that the number one exercise that recruits your glute max muscle is these step ups. So when we're doing this step up, we're gonna to help to create more firing power. What I'm doing is I'm stepping up. As I'm going up, I am pushing with the tush. So I'm feeling that engage in the tush. And then the second part is I'm driving with the thigh. So in a little more technical terms, it's we're talking about that push off phase and then the swing phase. The swing phase is where we get into trouble. That's that rotary. So I'm working on push with the tush, drive with the thigh. And so by doing this, we're gonna practice staying on the course, staying in that line. I'm using the opposite arm, opposite leg to mirror that, to create that forward momentum. And I'm making sure that I'm driving with the thigh, pushing with the tush, drive with the thigh. To make it a little more simulated, we add the jump. I hope this series was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please drop them below.